team, we are moving on. Look here, we're, we're, we're in chapter five now. We're talking about reaction forces. Chapter five is the first time this semester that we're talking about finding the reactions at supports. So the first thing I wanna to do today is talk to you about 2D, and I wanna to talk to you about what those supports might look like. And think about that's the way things are attached to the world, right? They're either gonna be number one, probably the most common, pin connected, okay? And you'll see me draw this, okay? And imagine a little steel plate and there's a pin that goes through it, right? And then the other thing is on there so that it can rotate freely, but I can't move it in the X or the Y direction, right? So let me get another color. Okay. So let me draw those react. What we're going to have is reaction forces, okay? Like on this drawing here, we have action forces and those action forces are going to cause reaction forces. Remember Newton's third law, okay? So typically on something like this, and all you have to do, you don't have to memorize all these, okay? You just have to ask yourself three questions. Can I move it in the X? Can I move it in the Y? Can I rotate it, okay? If the answer is ever no, I can't move it, right? Then there must be some reaction that's preventing you from moving it, okay? So like this guy. Can I move it in the X? Can I grab this and move it sides? No, it's pinned down. Can I move it in the Y? Uh, uh, no, okay, so there, what's on, on here is this. You'll have like an AY and an AX, okay? Now in this chapter and in your homework and things, they want you to leave these reactions in component form. So don't do like AXY squared or AX squared plus AY squared square root to find like a resultant um, it would be very rare to be asked that. Most of these, those the homeworks in the book and whatnot, will ask you to leave it in component form, okay? Oh, in a pin connection, can you rotate it? Can I grab? Yeah, I can rotate it. That's what a hinge does, right? That's what it does for a living is rotate, okay? The next most common thing you'll probably see is a roller, okay? Now, you'll, these come in a lot of different form, and the problem in the book are these connections are very small in the drawing, so you really got to look at them and say, what is, is that a roller? Okay, because if it's a roller, right, if I push down on this system, what does the ground do in return? Well, the ground pushes up, okay, with some normal force, right? So I could call that like normal at point A, okay? What about in the X direction? If I push you in the X direction, what happens? If you're on roller skates and I come up to you and I just push you in the X direction, what do you do? You just roll away. You can't resist me, right? <laughs> I know, it's a, no. But you can't resist that force, and so there is no reaction force there. So rollers just have a normal force perpendicular to the plane. If it's on an incline, it's perpendicular to the incline. That's why I say normal, because we know normal means perpendicular to the plane, okay? All right, so we got a few more. Here's another roller. This is my, what you might see is something like that. Same thing, okay? Here's just a smooth bar contacting the ground. So bar push on ground, ground push on bar, right? So that there's a normal force there. And you might see rollers like that that look like volleyballs or something. That's just a roller support, okay? Again, there's an NA, okay? Right at the bottom of the board. Okay, now here's one that you might really like, man. This is called a rocker, dude. Rocker, okay? We got rockers and we got rollers, yo. Okay, rocker, same thing. Rocker would be like my knuckles leaning on the board, right? Okay, same thing. I lean on the board, the board pushes on me, okay? So same thing, there's a normal force that's perpendicular to the plane there, okay? Now these are pretty common as well. These are sm the, smooth, sorry. These are fixed supports, okay? So think about like in your front yard, maybe a telephone pole, right? Okay, so what happens? Um, can you push down on it? Nope, okay? There must be some reaction there. And I keep putting an A there, because you'll have like a reaction at point A, you'll have a reaction at point B, right? But I'm just making them all A's. Can I push this to the side in the X direction? Nope, it's in the ground, won't move, okay? So there must be some force there. Now the question is, what happens if I pull on this with some kind of force up here, right? Well, it wants to spin, right? Will it do that if I have a wire hook to a telephone pole? Will it spin? No, 
So there's one more thing, and this time you have this, okay? A reaction moment. And that reaction moment is typically left off by the students and they forget about him. And that's a big no-no, okay? Same thing here. Have you ever seen this? How about you go to the hardware store and they've got those big racks with the lumber on them, right? And they got a cantilevered beam sticking out of it. That's what cantilevered means. There's no front support, right? It's just a beam out in the air. And then there's a load on there, right? Okay. Or maybe you go to the grocery store. This is the bread shelf. And there's some bread on the shelf, okay? If you lean on the shelf, does it do anything? No. Okay, so there's an AX. It's obviously, it's holding up the, the uh, bread, so there's an AY. And this bread, again, wants to rotate it, and so there is a reaction moment that prevents that from happening. So fixed supports, whether they're, whether they're horizontal or vertical, have three reaction forces. Don't forget that because a lot of students will leave that MA off. And one more, the smooth color. Okay, so there's a collar like that slides up and down a pole there, right? Okay, so how can the collar move? It can move up and down the pole freely. Smooth means no friction, right? No problem moving up and down the pole. However, how can it not move? It cannot move perpendicular, right? I'm going to call that again normal. It can't move perpendicular. It can't move perpendicular to the rod. I can slide up and down but not perpendicular, all right? What about rotating? If I pull down on it, will it spin? No, it will not, okay? So there's a reaction moment there as well. So those kind of connections are things that you can do by just asking yourself those questions. Can I move it in the X? Can I move it in the Y? Can I spin it? And if the answer is no, then you better put a reaction force there, right? And this is like, Common sense stuff, right? You don't have to memorize a chart in a book. This is, you should, you should understand how things work, right? All right, so how do we apply that to this little problem right here, which says, find the reactions at A and B, okay? Here's A and there's B. What is A? Well, uh, A is a pin connection, okay? So that's gonna have, pin connection is gonna have an AY and an AX. And then what, what about B? That's a roller. And so it's just going to have a BY only, okay? All right, so let's see. Which way does AY go? Now, here's the good thing. Sometimes you know which way these go, and sometimes you don't. If you got something to the left, you got to have something to the right. If you got something up, you got to have something down. This is equilibrium of a rigid body. So if equilibrium is to be uh, you know, uh, capable of happening, you gotta have left stuff meet equals the right stuff and the up stuff equals the down stuff. You gotta have that, okay? So look at this guy in the X, he's going that way. So which way does AX have to go? He's gotta go that way. And AY, I don't know, I got up stuff. I got, I, you know, I think he goes up. And here's some more good news. If you don't know which way they go, and sometimes I don't even know, I don't, I, you just gotta guess, right? And if you've gotta guess, that's okay. Because when you solve for AY, if I just guessed it and I solve it and I get a negative for AY, what does that mean? That means that I guessed it in the wrong direction. So a negative for one of your reactions simply means that you just guessed it in the wrong direction. Now, if I get a negative for AX, I'm going to be like, hmm, that don't sound right, man, because I know that's right, okay? I'm pretty sure AY is correct. It goes up. So if I get something else, I'm going to be like, mm. so I like to get them right if I can, okay? Now to solve this, of course, it's a 2D problem. Now that we have our reaction forces on there, this ought to be easy because we have th two equations. We have the sum of the forces in the X. We have the sum of the forces in the Y. And we have the sum of the moments about some point. And the beautiful thing about moments is you can pick any point you want. It doesn't matter, okay? I would suggest you pick point A. Why point A? Why point A? Because if I take the moment at point A, who gets knocked out? AX and AY, they're cha-cha forces. They go through point A. So guess what? There's only going to be one unknown in my moment equation. I like equations with one unknown in them, right? Because I'm, I'm going to get something right now. I'm going to get an answer. 
So generally, when you do these equations, always start out with the moment equation because you get something right now, okay? So I'm going to just fill in these equations for you, and then we'll look and see what we got here, okay? In the x, what do I have? I got 200, and I got negative ax, okay? Well, that tells me something, doesn't it? Because that's all there is, so then therefore, ax has to equal 200 pounds. Done. Sum of the forces in the y. What do I have? I have ay going uphill, and I got by going uphill, okay? Um, and then I got minus 400 and minus 300. Okay. That's not a good equation. I don't, I don't get an answer from that. So that's got two unknowns in it. Um, but taking the moment at A, what am I going to do? I knock out everything here. Oh, give me some dimensions, man. Let's say this is three feet and three feet, and this is three feet. Okay. We're just making this stuff up as we go along. It's all good. Okay, so here we go. Moment at A, I've got the 400, which rotates me negative. So minus 400 times how far away? He's in the middle of the three, so 1.5. Okay, and then I've got 300 here, which also rotates me negative. Times three away. And then I've got uh, the 200. Let's say that this is, uh, one more, let's say this is three feet tall as well, okay? The 200, put my finger point A, the 200 rotates, ooh, that's negative two, isn't it? Minus 200 times perpendicular distance of three, and then one more, and that's BY, and BY rotates me, ugh, okay? Plus BY times six, okay? Now, if I have an equation equal to zero, I've got to have some negative stuff, but i got to have some positive stuff too, right? So let's see, this is minus 600, and that's minus 900, and that's minus 600, and then plus 6by, okay, equals to zero. And let's see, six and six is 12, plus nine more is 2100, equals 6by, and therefore by has to equal what is that on 2100 divided by six is 350 pounds. Okay, so there's BY. And how do we find AY? Well, we just found BY, right? So we know that guy right there is 350, right? So 700 minus 350, why did I put that in my calculator? Uh, because it's 350, isn't it? AY is also 350 pounds. And there's your reactions at A, AX, AY, and your reactions at B, what they wanted to know over there, right? So the key to this chapter is can you draw free body diagrams with the correct reaction forces on them, okay? We'll do some more 2D reaction force problems to kind of get a handle on that, and then... We'll tackle some 3D, okay? I'll see you next time.